Hello, it is great to see you again in this live edition of VTV News brought to you by VTV International. I'm Ming Hang from Hanoi and let's now take a look at our headlines. President Chiu Tien Sang joins thousands in tribute to the Kings. 26th ASEAN Summit concludes and adopts three declarations. And U.S. veterans return to Vietnam for a journey of healing. Now first off for this hour, President Chiang Tien Sang and thousands of people gathered at the Hong King's Temple in Phu Tha Province today, April the 28th, to mark the beginning of the Hong King's Festival. The festival is held on the 10th date of the third lunar month in honors of Vietnam's traditional founders and its first emperors. President Sang, together with other parties and state leaders, offered incense at the temple on Nghĩa Linh Mountain. Also this morning, Chu Ngoc Anh, the chairman of Phu Tha Province, People's Committee gave a speech about the efforts and achievements of the kings, the foundations of Vietnam and the contributions of subsequent generations. Organizers said about two million visitors were expected at the, the temples during today, with total attendance expected to top six million during the six-day festival. In other news, the 26th ASEAN Summit concluded on Langkawid Islands, Malaysia, yesterday, adopting three key declarations. They were the Kuala Lumpur Declarations on a People-Oriented, People-Centered ASEAN, the Langkawid Declarations on the Global Movement of Moderates, and the Kuala Lumpur Declarations on Institutionalizing the Resilience of ASEAN and its Peoples to Disasters and Climate Change. Adoption. In conclusions, the Prime Ministers First, of Malaysia's held ASEAN leaders for actively participating in the summit, helping to turn the ASEAN community's ASEAN. vision into reality. Second, the Lankawi Decorate. The 10 senior official meetings of the Mekong sub-regions countries are Psalm 10 on an anti-human trafficking measures opened in the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh this Tuesday morning. About 200 delegates from China, Laos, Myanmar and Vietnam attended this event, chaired by Cambodian ministers of women's affairs Ong Kanta Favi. Psalm 10 represents the determinations and solidarity of regional countries in tackling the issues of human trafficking. Earlier, an initiative for Laos Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, China and Myanmar to collaborate in implementing anti-human trafficking measures was started in 2003. Psalm 10 will conclude tomorrow to prepare for a ministerial level meeting regarding human trafficking due to take place on April the 30th. On to some business story, GDP growth in the first quarter of this year recorded at 6.03%, to which FDI Enterprises contributed 60%. According to experts, the economy has been recovering, but this trend might not be sustainable. In the following report, we'll listen to some of the arguments from experts. According to the General Statistics Office, GDP growth in the first quarter of 2015 was 6.03%, the highest growth rate since 2011. It indicates the signs of economic recovery. Economic experts say that there are several reasons for this situation. Many enterprises have overcome difficulties in 2014 and expanded their business. The FBI sector has also developed further. Despite low prices, the agriculture sector's contribution to the entire economy has increased. The recovering real estate market and increasing demand in general are also indicators of GDP growth. Economic policies have been improved and shown good effects. The government has enforced this policy more strongly, thus helping to raise their effectiveness in economic development. In spite of the high growth in the first quarter, experts still wonder about its stability. The FDI sector contributed 60 percent to the economic growth and has advantages when competing with domestic companies. Therefore, economists urge for better solutions to help domestic companies improve their capacity and competitiveness. Domestic enterprises have low competitiveness compared to FDI companies. Thus, it is difficult for the economy to grow sustainably. 
In 2015, Vietnam will be more integrated into the international markets. We should boost administrative reforms to restructure the economy. Domestic enterprises should be the leader in sustainable and modern technologies. Since the 1990s, Vietnam has made progress in digital technology and it should follow up with investment in this area. According to the International Monetary Fund, the Vietnamese economy is expected to grow at 6% in 2015. After seeing the results from the first quarter, domestic firms can be more positive about the business environment. However, they know that they still need to improve their capacity to compete with FDI companies and grow more sustainably. Now, during a field trip on Monday, ministries of transport officials urged project investors to speed up work on the Hanoi Haiphong Expressway project, ensuring the first 25 kilometers of roadway are completed by May the 19th. The ministry is also required constructors in charge of the work to mobilize sufficient equipment and staff to ensure the construction proceeds as planned. The last packages of the highway project running between Hai Zhuang and Hai Phong is in its final stage. The highway includes six lanes and was designed for speeds of up to 120 kilometers per hour. Hanoi Hai Phong Expressway was designed in Type A with two polymer layers and PMV Type 3. The surface will be covered with a roughening layer to meet the speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Upon supervising the project progress, Deputy Minister of Transport Nguyen Hong Chung said that there remain several packages that have yet to be completed as planned, despite the fact that funds and construction premises have been handed over. We are directing the investors to take drastic measures to speed up work and to ensure the construction of all the packages is carried out comprehensively. We also have detected packages which seem to operate below expected quality, and we will demand solutions for those. The Ministry of Transport demanded constructors gather forces, equipment, funds and staff to make sure the work meets the expected plan. Daily progress will be reported to the ministry. We have set three points of progress. The first 25 kilometers from Hai Zhong to Hai Phong will open the traffic on May the 19th. The package from Hung Nguyen to Hai Phong will be finished on July the 30th. And the last 15 kilometers is scheduled to be completed in November. As such, the Hanoi Hai Phong Expressway will open the traffic by the end of this year as planned. With a total investment capital of roughly 2.2 billion US dollars, the 105.5 kilometers long highway is a national project and is expected to boost the country's northern delta economy. When completed, the highway will shorten the time traveling between Hanoi and Hai Phong from three hours to only one hour. Now, the first ever sign parked for the Vietnamese education sector was recently licensed by the Saigon High Tech Park or SHTP and will be constructed by Nguyen Tha Thanh University in Ho Chi Minh City. This uh, project will be named the Millennium Science Park, has a total investment capital of about 41.7 million US dollars. The park is expected to apply new and modern technology to the surrounding campus and focus on facilitating agriculture research. This can be done through utilizing green energy, green materials and other high-tech agricultural practices. Once operational, the park will offer a world-class research center for students and researchers in Ho Chi Minh City and will become a technology transfer hub for the southern region. Still to come here on BTV News, Vietnam Sea and Island Sovereignty seen from the liberations of Spratly Archipelago. And later on, we'll meet with a U.S. veteran who returns to Vietnam for a journey of healing. Stay tuned. BTV News will be right back.
You're watching VTV News live from Hanoi. Now, the Organization Board of National Anniversary Ceremonies opens a press center on Monday morning at the Ho Chi Minh City Press Association. The center aims to serve during the celebrations for the 40th anniversaries of Southern Liberation and National Reunification Day on April 30th. The center, which is equipped with about 30 computers with access to high speed internet and relevant equipment, will provide a space for thousands of local and foreign journalists. The press will focus on national reunification and the development's histories of Ho Chi Minh City and the entire nation. During the last days of April 1975, along with the historic battles on land, another campaign was taking place. It was the liberation of Trường Sa. Liberating the area, also known as the Spratly Archipelago, proved Vietnam's strategic visions and its awareness of its sovereignties over the islands and waters. From this house, constant directive on the southern battlefield was sent from March 1975. The Politburo made a decision that the South had to be liberated before the rainy season, around the 25th of March. Along with this decision, another important one was made to liberate the islands in the East Sea. The focus of island liberation had to be the islands of the Spratly Archipelago. Major General Nguyen Văn Ninh was at the time in charge of military tactics at sea. According to him, the decision to liberate the Spratly Archipelago was made after the liberation of Đà Nẵng. By the 9th of April 1975, the Department of Military Intelligence under the High Command discovered that the Spratly Archipelago was likely to be left behind. Immediately, the military commission of the Paris Central Committee ordered the 5th Military Region and naval command to send troops to the archipelago. This mission faced challenges. As directed, taking over the island was to be fast, as the archipelago might have been taken by other forces. Casualties would be to be limited at all costs. To accomplish this task, the liberation troops would first take over the Samtu Tay Island and then other ones in turn. The whole campaign ended after 15 days. Our troops reported that they observed big and black ships without flags sailing around the islands. Our troops raised all our flags on the highest points of the islands to confirm our sovereignty. This proves that the decision on liberating the Spratly Archipelago was absolutely right. If we had been just around for 10 days late, other forces would have taken over the islands. The Spratly Archipelago was liberated before Saigon. From the point of view of a historian, liberating the Spratly Archipelago was a smart decision. This decision will remain a valuable one for thousands of years. The Spratly Archipelago was liberated on the 29th of April 1975, one day before Saigon. This triumph confirms the long-standing sovereignty of Vietnam over the sea and islands. Now, in light of the 40th anniversaries of Southern Liberation and National Reunification Day, the War Remnants Museum opened two photo exhibitions in Ho Chi Minh City. They are Memories of Wartime Roads by Vietnamese photographers Hoang Văn Sắc and War and Peace 50 Years of Vietnam by Japanese photographers Ishikawa Bunyo. The former features 93 photos telling stories of the fierce struggles of the Vietnamese peoples on the roads to the battlefields. Meanwhile, the Japanese photographers won 100 pictures are his collections from when he was a war reporter in Vietnam. This picture reflects the ferocities of the war in Vietnam and the love for peace held by the Vietnamese people. Now these days, we are looking back at the past in celebrations of the 40th anniversaries of the country's reunification day. In order to learn more about the country's resilience and bravery during the war, people often visit war remnants museums where history is revived vividly. Let's now follow a visit to the fifth regional branch of the Ho Chi Minh Museum. The Ho Chi Minh Museum fifth region branch is getting busy on the last days of April. People are coming for the Spring Victory 1975 exhibition. 
Over 15,000 war artifacts are preserved at this museum, and each item has its own historical value. Each item requires its own space for preservation, thus I have to keep many keys. We try our best to keep historical objects for the longest time to support historical researchers. Being able to touch any war remnants really leaves a special feeling. This is a bloody notebook of a martyr collected in the field. Staff members of the museum were the first to read the touching messages in the notebook. Dear my comrade, this is Gong. I'll be leaving life soon. It's too early since I have not been able to contribute to the party. I wish you all victory. The martyr's wish and belief became true after the country had fought a long battle. Thanks to the resilient work of the museum, we are able to gain better understanding of the situation as well as people's emotions during the war. To better preserve and restore historic artifacts, we have to learn more about the objects and the historical values that they carry. We often publish writing about the exhibits. We are very proud of our job. We hope to be able to keep more historic objects to better support researchers and the community. For visitors at the museum, the country's history is revived vividly thanks to the staff who work diligently every day to keep war artifacts in great condition. The war in Vietnam ended 40 years ago, but the remains of hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese soldiers haven't been found, while over 1,600 American soldiers remained missing in actions, or MIA. Vietnam and the United States have collaborated in finding the missing soldiers over the past 40 years. This collaboration has greatly contributed to the relations between the two nations. This American soldier remains missing in action from the war in Vietnam. For 40 years, his sister has worked for the National League of Families of American Prisoners and Missing in Southeast Asia. All is tracking the latest updates on the cooperation to find American soldiers' remains. She understands how this collaboration has contributed to two-way relations. That cooperation has increased tremendously, and in particular the last few years, I mean, it's very clear that this issue, the accounting for American personnel from the missing from the Vietnam War, served as the bridge between the United States and Vietnam. This ceremony has taken place on a regular basis at Vietnam's airports for many years. As of April 2015, the remains of 130 Americans have been repatriated from Vietnam. Chúng ta đã làm cho người dân Mỹ. We have showed our humanitarian trade to the U.S. For the American soldiers who brought war to Vietnam, we are doing our best to bring their remains back to their home country. In return, the U.S. has been supporting Vietnam to find hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese soldiers' remains by information sharing. The two-way collaboration has somewhat relieved the remaining pain of American families and further strengthened the bilateral relationship. Now, in the following report, we'll meet a U.S. veteran who has returned to Vietnam 17 times to seek reconciliations after the war. His story is an account of both the grief of war and the peace that is possible through good work and forgiveness. VTV reporter Ziu Ang has the story. My name is Daryl Perryman. I come back because I want to be helpful and I want to contribute something to Vietnam after all the damage I did as a young, naive, but patriotic American. As I'm making my crossing, when I'm leaving this earth, I'm sure there'll be thoughts about Vietnam, and I hope they're good ones. 48 years ago, a ship carried Daryl Perriman, then a 21-year-old surgeon across the Pacific Ocean to fight in a land he knew nothing about. That country was Vietnam. Daryl is on his 17th trip to Vietnam, making a visit to Sa Thai, Gong Chien province, where he fought one of the toughest battles in his life. 
in March of 1968, we encountered Battalion 209 of the People's Army of Vietnam. And there was a three-day battle at a place called Sate. So that battle was a major point in my life. It was, it, it was an incredibly difficult time for us. It was difficult for them. People were being, it was, it was a lot of, a lot of blood and uh, it was difficult. It must have been horrendously difficult for the Vietnamese. Here, Daryl and his old teammates met with Vietnamese veterans from Battalion 209. The meeting between survivors of different front lines can be overwhelming. Trên bây giờ việc họ trở lại thì chiến tranh thì hết rồi nhưng mà the war is now over. Though many Vietnamese died, we think that time has healed the pain and now we have a friendship that we have never thought possible before. During that battle, more than 200 Vietnamese soldiers fell, but today the old enemies could stand together with open arms. Vietnamese people are very forgiving toward us Americans who came here and fought them, which well, it, it really touches me that they're, they're that way, that they can just accept us back. As... Daryl's first son, Benjamin, died of Asian Orange at six. That's also why he now returns regularly to work with other veterans to support the suffering children from Vietnam. The commitment to doing good work on the home world of their former enemies is testament to the power of reconciliation. And the generous reception by their former enemies is testament to the human's capacity for forgiveness. It is about healing. If, if I can do something good for the people that I tried to kill years ago who are no longer angry at me, then I'll feel like I've accomplished something. I don't want the last thought I have when I die to be a regret over what I did in Vietnam. If I have a thought about Vietnam before I die, I want it to be, I tried to do the right thing. I, I tried to make up for what I did. Let's now moving on to uh, some culture news. On April the 27th, the central cities of Da Nang inaugurated a special fair which has gathered many antiquities from Da Nang City over various periods in history. This event is the first one of its kind ever held in this central city. Antiquities at the fair belong to 20 collectors across the country and include bronze objects, potteries, old pennies and paper money, kerosene lamps, old books, war brands, remembrances and objects from the subsidies, uh, subsidized era. All of the exhibits remind people of unforgettable times in the country's past and reflect on the cultural exchanges between Vietnam and Southeast Asian, West Asians and Western countries. The Antiquity Fair is expected to be popular during the national reunification holiday and will last until May 1st. The re rehearsal for the Da Nang International Fireworks Competition 2015 took place yesterday in the central coastal city. Themed a symphony of uh, colors, the main uh, spectacle will take place tonight, April the 28th, and tomorrow night local time. Teams from South Africa, the United States, Australia, Poland, and the host cities of Da Nang will compete side by side. In the framework of the event, there will be many sporting activities, such as cuisine shows, a procession of decorated boats and music performances. The idea is for spectators, both domestic and foreign, to enjoy the cultural identity of Vietnam at this special annual event. Now, Thuy Thanh Village in central Thu Thinh Huế province is famous for its Mi Lam conical hat products and the national relic size of Thanh Tuan Rupt Bridge. The locality has for years been thriving on a community-based tourism. Let's visit the village to see how locals benefit from this model. Located six kilometers to the southeast of Huế City, Thanh Toan Roof Bridge is one of the last ancient bridges in Vietnam with unique architecture and design. After discovering the bridge, visitors can then go on to experience the process of making traditional conical hats. It's such an amazing experience. We now know how the locals make Vietnamese hats. Visiting Thuy Thanh village, 
Tourists can also pay a visit to a special gallery displaying farming tools. This offers tourists first-hand experiences of a farmer's life from rice milling, fishing to plowing. Everything is presented by these real local farmers. As a farmer and a local tour guide, I need to help tourists, of which many are foreigners, to know what a day in the rural areas is like. I also learn many things. Currently, there are six tourism agencies working in Thuy Thanh village. Since the beginning of this year, the village welcomed 18,000 visitors. This proves that besides heritage tourism, community-based tourism like this also helps promote the locality's image and tourism sector. The community-based tourism model has helped raise the income of local farmers while contributing to the overall development of Thuy Thanh Huế province. And now, as usual, before we say goodbye, let's take a look at the updated weather forecast of major cities and provinces here in Vietnam and around the world. And that is all we have for you at this hour. For more information and updates, simply log on to vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go. Thank you very much for tuning in. Goodbye for now from Hanoi.